Hey everybody, so I promised when I found enough things I would do an update on my metal detecting finds. I'm going to start off and show you the coins that I found, new and old, and also show you a load of military stuff that I found that's all very interesting and there's a few sort of mystery items and some very cool stuff that I've found. Uh, first off, let's do the coins. Uh, I will quickly say, the reason I haven't done many videos of metal detecting is basically because I have done many 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 trips and found very little each time and to film digging every single thing would slow the process down so much that I'd get one video out a year if I was lucky. However also it is really nice to get away and have like a hobby that isn't involving the cameras so it's cool that I can show you what I found though. So I haven't cleaned up any of these coins because ah what's the point really you know it's if I want a new 1p I can get a new 1p. Uh, and the older stuff you shouldn't really touch too much anyway. So anyway, let's just go through it. So obviously we've got modern 1Ps, modern 2Ps, 5Ps, 10Ps, tons of 20Ps. Uh, spent a while thinking, why am I finding so many 20Ps? It makes no sense. And of course it does. Um, there are car parks around this area which are pay and display and 20Ps are the sort of thing that you pay with, not coppers. Uh, and 50, so it's always things like 10s and 20s and stuff that you pay with. I think you find an average, well, pounds these days, but I remember the old days. Current 50p's, current pound coins, current two pound coin, and then we've got old style one pound coins. I believe the old style one pound coins can still be uh, exchanged in banks. They can't be used in shops, but I think they can be exchanged in banks. Um, and on that basis, I have about 24 quid. Let's move on to the old stuff. So we've got old style 50p's, old style 10p's, and they're sort of, you know, they're modern old currency. This is the old old currency stuff and this is where my oldest coin and actually my oldest dated item is. Uh, so I have a sixpence. Very nice patina on this. I didn't actually find this one metal detecting. I went to the beach to just see how things had eroded and found this sat in the car park on the surface and I thought it was just a 1p to start with but it's actually a 1963 coin, so this thing's pretty old. And we've got a couple of three pence coins, known as thrippity bits. This one has got the queen on it, and I believe the date on this one is 1967. It's a bit difficult to make out. I did make it out if I use a hand lens, but with the contrast of the camera, it might be a bit clearer to you there. But the, the queen being on it helps date it. You will notice though, this has not got a lady on it, it has got a man on it, because this is an older coin, another thrippity bit. But this one has got the nice old design on it and it's quite clearly dated 1942 which means that this could have been dropped by a soldier doing his stuff on the island back in World War II and we'll get on to that soon uh, and I, one of the reasons I'm making this is I think it is a good reminder that World War II seemed like a long time ago um, to people that were born outside of that time you know many people from the time they're actually alive are no longer with us uh, and it seems like it was a, a you know, an, an age ago, and it really wasn't. It really, really wasn't. And from the stuff I'll show you in a minute, it's a, it's a good reminder that things were on our doorstep relatively recently. So this is an old UK one pence coin. This one is 1966, so, you know, it's not that old. Uh, I have found another one here, which was my oldest coin uh, to this point, which you can see again. We have a man on here, a king, and this is 1912. If you can make that out. And that, as I say, was the oldest coin that I'd found until just the other day when I found this one, which unfortunately is in a bit of a state, but if it's been in a beach since 1905, 117 years, uh, it's doing pretty well. So someone dropped this coin at some point then, was probably quite annoyed about it. And two world wars happened since then. Then we've got some half pennies. These are generally around the 60s, 70s. They're not that old and it's hard to see on most of them anyway because they're so thin that they just get battered by the sea. Out of interest, I do actually have another one, another penny, but this penny I did not find. I was handed this down. This is known as a bun penny because the queen has a bun because it's when she was very young. Because this, sorry, when I say the Queen, the previous Queen, because this is 1866. Yeah, 1866. 
Okay, so let's move on to the cool stuff, the military stuff that I found. I want to make a very, very big point here. Do not just go metal detecting in places that you do not know the history of and without knowing of the dangers of the things that you may find there. I have met metal detectorists in the same places that I go that I found some of this stuff and sort of been like, you are aware of the sort of stuff you will find here and they're like, what? We're looking for coins and jewellery and I'm like, well, you aren't going to find cool coins and jewellery here because no one comes here, but... Um, yeah, you will find other stuff. Where I'm doing this is completely okay by the laws and what I'm keeping is completely okay because I understand what is and isn't okay. There is a general rule, which is this. If it has any form of explosives in it, or should we say, unless you're absolutely sure it has not got any form of explosives in it, then you cannot keep it. Um, I know from these things that I've found and from my knowledge on this stuff, which is far, far more than you're probably going to be imagining, I'm pretty educated, so I don't make silly decisions. Just to make it clear. Also, I've lived and grown up on this island, as has my family, for a very long time. And we've had connections with a lot of the stuff that was going on here. So part of growing up here was knowing about the stuff that you find on the beaches and how it can be dangerous and what to do with it. Like, we used to find live 303 rounds all the time. And the rule was, you find one, just lob it into the sea deeper than it was before. Uh, there is so many out there. There is so much stuff littered in the sea around this area that it's every tide can bring something new and also the system of sea defenses that they do here where they use dredges to dredge up stuff from the bottom of the channel and then chuck it onto our beaches means that they dig a lot of this stuff with it and chuck it onto the beach which is why it gets replenished as well as the stuff that washes up after storms which is sat just just out there not that far where should we start well we're talking about bullets and 303 so let's start with that a couple of 303 cases that i found uh, these would be normally fired out of a Lee Enfield rifle, but because of the elong elongated primer strikes, most likely fired out of a Lewis gun. Uh, elongated primer strikes something you get from um, machine guns, opposed to rifles which you get normally a circular mark. As it turns out, there was a thing on Hailing called the Hailing Island School of Musketry, where teams of, of soldiers came down from all over the country to train on different systems, like they had a whole line of Lewis guns. So there's probably thousands of these out there. Um, but in places you're not allowed to look. I did also find another one that is absolutely haggard. It had the primer popped out of it and it's obviously been squished by something. I'm guessing the bulldozers that moved the stones or something, but that is, that's a lot of force to squish the bottom end of a case like that. But the rest of it's pretty, pretty messed up. Um, we'll continue on with the bullets because I still, I have mentioned a couple of these things in previous videos. I still have this round which I have not identified um, it's around six and a bit millimetres, you know, in inches. That's wrong for 303. It's also quite long, which is a bit weird. Which is, I don't know why this isn't showing up very well. Uh, and millimetres. Due to its length, I was slightly concerned it might be in a tracer, but having looked at the base of it, I, it's lead. It's not a tracer. So, could be modern, more modern, could be old, but it's it's... It's an interesting one and it annoys me because I don't know what it is. I don't just find old stuff though. I found this, which is quite clearly a 223 blank. Now, do not worry. The first thing I did when I found it was check that it had been struck. Ah, oh, but the primer could have gone off and not set off the powder inside. That's why it's not uncrimped. I agree with you. Uh, but when I found it, sand was pouring out of it. And I will say here, I'm, to my understanding, you don't actually need any form of a license to own blanks. I could probably go and buy these myself off, off the shelf and blank firing guns, but it's beside the point, because this is exactly the same as a nail gun cartridge, basically, just bigger. Anyway, this is, uh, this is a 2014 British Army, if I didn't say. Yeah, I washed it out. So much sand came out of it that I was sure that it would be fine. I then hand-drilled a small hole in it to make sure there was no powder in it. And I can confirm there was none. It was just sand, uh, and I'd got most of it out by washing it anyway, that small hole. So now it's now completely safe and uh, good to keep. Uh, but it's just interesting that there is a 223 blank on the beach from... A 2014 batch. Another old item, and this really, it, it's it's such a small thing and it doesn't, it's so boring kind of, but in the same way it could actually be the oldest thing I've found and the most interesting when it comes to projectiles. So you may know that fishing weights are called split shot and that is because the sizes of fishing weights is the same as what is used in muskets and in bird shot and shotgun shells. You know, they're the same size shot, they just make holes in them or they split them to be used for that method. 
Uh, in fact, people in the old days, like American Civil War, would turn their old Monet bullets uh, into sinkers, you know, for catching fish. So it's something that's happened for a long time, it's using bullets as weights for fishing. But anyway, I have found loads of them. And I've been excited every single time that I found one and then found a hole going through it or a split in it. And it well, I was like, well, that's not a musket ball, is it? And then I found this one, which has got a sprue mark in it and no holes whatsoever. And because I have an inert ammunition collection and I'm a bit of a nerd about all this stuff, I happen to have another one, a modern one that was made. And as you can see, it's basically the exact same size, which means this is a musket ball, which means it could be Henry VIII era like six, some, six, seven hundred years old, it might equally be a hundred years old. It could be, going, as I said, hailing school of musketry, they might have had an actual musket there just for a bit of fun, and this was a few of them that got fired. As you may know, is I was finding lots of pieces of what I assumed was driving bands, as in the brass bands around shells, bullets, that is used to help seal and engage with the rifling uh, of the barrel, which means you get better sealing and you get the rotation of the round. Sorry, I wasn't explaining that very well at all. These are little pieces of driving band, as you can see, you can see the marks in them. And I did find a couple of much bigger pieces more together. And that's you know, that one you see is in very good condition. Um, these I thought from Bofors, 40 millimeter rounds, but it may be actually there from two pounders. It's it's difficult to say, but they're different as well. Like this one's got a line through it and this one's got a hatching through it. So yeah, that's quite cool to find, but yeah, it's slightly frustrating. I can't exactly work out which these bits are from. Unlike some of the next bits, I find a lot of this and most of it I just leave because it's just little pieces. And you might look at this and say, that's just molten aluminium from a campfire or something. And most people probably think the, th think the same thing, but if you look at them, they've got threads in them and they've got steps inside and there's there's definitely a structure to this and then I found this piece with that little square notch and that was the absolute sealer for me that I definitely know what all this is from and it confirms my suspicion. My suspicion is that these are from fuses of 40 millimeter Bofors rounds, uh, anti-aircraft rounds and if you compare this to images of them that's what it's from and it's not a surprise because we had tons of, we had eight, 12 of the guns on the island. So the beaches are littered with this stuff. Just to give you an idea of how large a round this was, this is part of the fuse at the top, okay? Uh, there was a bit more to the fuse and then there was the body of the actual round that then went into a shell, just like a normal rifle, just a little bit bigger. Just slightly bigger. I own one because I bought one from an antique store. Very cheaply actually. As I say, just like a normal rifle round, you've got a primer on the base that fires. There is actually a tube inside called a fuse tube, which helps distribute the initial um, flame front to make sure that it lights what will probably be cordite strands inside. And then the projectiles on the end and fires out. And this is from a basic machine gun. They, are, they were used by all sides in World War II uh, and they are still used by many nations now. I think we may even still use some modernized versions. Um, what they basically did was kept the same gun and made smart rounds for them and sighting systems, but the gun beneath it hasn't really changed and it is a brutal machine. 40 millimeter bow falls. Sorry, going back one step to the, the old driving band stuff. I did find this, okay, and I've, this is three pieces that I've stuck together. Now, if you look at it, it's got what looks like a thread on the inside. So this could be, well, my initial impression is this is was a cone originally going the other direction uh, from around that blew up and in blowing up, it splayed out and then it snapped at these points because that's, it couldn't bend anymore and it just, you know, just snapped. However, then my brain was like, could that be the edge of a symbol? And I can't work out whether these are straight lines or whether it actually is a thread. But I just get the feeling the way that that's blown out like that, that that's from a shell. But it's quite cool that I found three pieces of it. Although if it did break up in midair that way, I wouldn't have found all three pieces. Although I did find them on different days and slightly different, it's kind of nuts. But anyway, yeah, I, I don't know. Symbol or part of a, I don't know. 
Now, if I said to you, look, this is a piece of a hand grenade, you can quite clearly see this is a square section of like a fragmentation grenade. It's broken off around here. It's got a threaded top here. That's got to be part of a hand grenade, right? I'd agree with you, apart from the fact that it's alloy. So I don't think it is. And I have no idea what it is. And that brings us on to this. Now, well, I, oh, I don't think I've shown you this before. I might have done apologies if I have for previous viewers, but new viewers won't know the difference. I found this, and when I found it, I just recognised something about it and didn't know why I knew what it was. And it was something about that shape with a circle and the corresponding one there. So I kept it, and it sat on my table for a couple of days, and then suddenly, when I was looking at the side of it, these striations here, it just hit me. That is the base of a Mills bomb, as in, a, a, you know, one of the original, not the original grenades, the grenades are very old. Uh, very, 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 very old. However, this is one of the original modern type grenades. Uh, and yeah, it was super cool to have found the base. You can see it's been blown apart. It was obviously used in practicing on the beaches. It wouldn't have been used in combat here because, um, you know, grenades are used against infantry. We didn't get infantry land here. So yeah, it has to be used in practice. That's a very cool thing to find. The hole in the middle, by the way, should be threaded to put it onto a rod to make it into a uh, grenade, a, a rifle fired grenade. At first, looks very nondescript and boring. It's a piece of brass, bronze. It's got some very coarse uh, machining marks on it, or maybe even that's like a casting mark. I don't know. I thought, when I first found this and looked at it that way, that, oh, that's gonna be part of a bell. It's just gonna be a bit of an old ship's bell, isn't it? And then I turned it round and, and dropped it. Uh, and then I turned it round and realized it's threaded. And because of the threading and the marks and stuff here, and because of the general curve of it, and the fact that it kind of goes into a, into a cone, I'm thinking this may be from a very old, for, I mean, hang on a minute, there's one of it was something I noticed. If I got uh, this tape and I hold it up to here, that actually matches the curve almost perfectly. So if that was the case, it would be about three and a half inches, which sounds a bit wrong. So it might be part of a four inch uh, naval gun shell. It could be something smaller and it's splayed out more openly. Um, or it, it, it might be a bell that was threaded on the inside for some reason. Or maybe it's not threading, maybe it's like tuning. I, I don't know. I'd love to know, as I say, it annoys me when I don't know what things are. Okay, right, this is cool. So if you remember these, these are driving bands from 20 millimeter Hispano or Ehrlichan rounds, which were used in uh, Spitfires before they went to 303. Was it 308? Did they use 303 or 308 in the Spitfires afterwards? I know I'm trying to remember, I feel like I misremembered something, but they used 20 millimeters to start with. And the, the, the projectiles from these, the actual bullet part that would have been on it, was made of uh, steel iron, and that just gets annihilated by the sea, as it turns out, because I found these, which obviously don't get affected by the sea. You may notice on the inside of these like a striated pattern and the, the overall look. Well, one day I'm metal detecting and I find this piece of concretion. Concretion is basically when there is steel or iron, well, steel has got iron in it and iron's thing that's rust. So it's basically the iron. When iron rusts in the sea or in the ground, it leaches out the iron. The iron from the object just, it just turns to a black sludgy mush and the iron itself leaches into the stones around so what this is is like sand and stones and stuff that have all been held together by the steel of what was originally inside this lump and what i mean originally inside this lump is if you look down in here yeah, if you look down in there you can see the striations of one of those rings which is held in place but what you can also see is a perfect mold of the base of the round as it was so this is like a mold of, of the bullet with the ring remaining in the concretion. So I thought that was like, I know exactly what was in there. It's cool that I found that and knew what it was. I really wanted to find one of the rounds, but one of the training rounds, because I don't want ones that will explode for clear and obvious reasons. Well, I found one basically. Here you go, here's a picture of it. Um, you can see it is a rusted mess. But what I was very pleased to see is it had no screw like parts to it. There was no sections to it. Uh, it was quite clearly a training round. I tried to tap some concretion off of the bottom of it using another stone, because that's the thing about concretion, it just pops off. I'm, by the way, tapping rounds is a bad idea unless you already can be very sure you know what it is. 
well, by luck, I tapped that concretion very gently and it popped off and it took the base of the round with it, unfortunately, but that opened up the core, which allowed me to see that it was indeed completely empty. So I knew it was safe. I checked the depth of it to make sure that the, the hole inside went right up to the inside of the tip. So I knew this was a solid piece of steel with a copper band around it and nothing more. When I knew that, I took it home and I boiled it in water to do a rust conversion on it. I know it will be, it's gonna remove some of what's there, the original material, but it's so rusted out that if I leave it, it's gonna just disintegrate like this did, even out, even out the land. Once the rust is in, it's not stopping. So I boiled it, removed the concretion, lightly brushed it with a wheel uh, to get down to the original steel. Oh, and restuck the base on. You can see this little round ring here, that falls out. Uh, this is hollow all the way down to the tip. Uh, it is steel and brass, it's perfectly safe. Um, did I say I've dipped it in beeswax? If you notice there's some wax here. I dipped it in beeswax um, just to protect it, get, stop the oxygen getting to it, stopping any rust forming again. The the oxide that's left here is a rust oxide, but it's the black rock rust oxide that won't reform orange unless it gets wet. And it's in the right condi conditions. In the house, in the dry conditions, and now waxed, this will stay like this forever. So it's now preserved. And it is a very cool thing to find. You know, uh, I, I always knew I would find one one day, and I did. Now, again, like the Bofors that we still use now, we still use the Ehrlichans. Here is a modern Ehrlichan round, 20 millimeters, as I say, that would have sat around there in the neck. So you can see it's about the same size. As you can clearly see, as I mentioned, it has no cuts, no tips to unscrew or anything like this one actually has. Uh, I'm sure this is a reproduction tip because it would have been fused, but um, yeah, there's a, there's a hole in them normally, which would be filled with explosives. And we don't want any of that stuff. I have accepted the fact that one day I probably will find something like a 25 pound bomb and have to call in the, the authorities to sort it out. I mean, it'd be interesting, but I'd rather not. I'd rather just find stuff like this that I can keep. I feel like I'm winning so far. As I say, that little collection of things to me is super cool. That really, although it's just a lump of concretion, really adds to a cool thing. And particularly cool, because as I say, I know what it all is. Now I do know exactly what is in this box. It's a bullet, but where it came from and what it did is a mystery. The weird thing about this, right, is that it measures up as just under the size of a 50 cal round. Now you're probably aware of 50 BMG from, you know, 15 round machine gun, or the Barrett 50 uses that. Well, this is one of those rounds for my collection of inert stuff, to be clear, all legal and above board. You can see it's a lot bigger and it's only 45 millimeters long, which is a very short 50 cal. It also appears, now I will say here, I've, I've scraped the bottom to make sure that that is indeed lead, uh, and it is lead all the way through. It appears to be wrapped in an alloy jacket. Now this is, and, and the shortness also adds to the weirdness of this. There's, there's a couple of things this could be. You can ask questions like, why would it be shorter? And why would it be an alloy and not just standard? Well, it's lighter, isn't it? And the reason why you want lighter is because you want more of them, and that normally means aircraft. Apparently the Germans have been known for using alloy jacketed ammo um, for that exact reason for aircraft so they could carry more ammunition. So this could be a German round 50 cal that's just worn down a lot because this jacket is paper thin. Uh, and as I say, it seems like it is alloy because it's not rusted at all. Uh, the tip strangely though, does actually attract to a magnet slightly, but it does seem to be like an alloy in lead. So it could be that. However, there is something else that it could be. As I say, this measures up, I need to be very careful here, 12.41 millimeters. And if you measure a 50 cal, it's 12.48. So it could just be a worn down 50 cal German round but there is another option. If it's worn down a lot more, there are rounds for the 50.55 cal boys anti-tank rifle, which look just like this. And that's not a very common gun, but this is the sort of place that they would have been training with it. So it is very possible this is a boys anti-tank rifle round, in which case it would be super cool. Or it could be a German round, which would also be pretty damn cool because it meant it was definitely, you know, this is from World War II. Or it could be something else entirely that I don't know and someone else will. 
say 45 millimeters long, you've seen the other measurement. I think some of the stuff that I found is very, very cool. I think many people will not care the slightest, but for me, it's a connection to history. And I think it's very good to remember the fact that World War II, as I say, was not that long ago, and we should really learn from our previous mistakes. So I do not want you to think that I'm glorifying finding these things. It is more the respect to the history and the connection to what it is and a reminder that it was not that long ago and that our freedoms that we enjoy now are not as ancient as you would like to feel. And of course it's with thanks to the men and women of the services uh, of this country that help keep us protected. Uh, as much as people might, like, might not like an army, you probably won't like the outcome of not having one. So yeah. There we go. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. I will do an update in the future when I find some more cool things. But as I say, this has taken me months to get to this point and I've gone up and down the same beaches so much now that I feel like I've almost like emptied them. If I could find some new places to go, maybe some new beaches, that'd be cool. But I'm always trying to make sure I'm on the right side of the law. I'm in the right places, not anywhere with private land and I'm also not being dumb. As I say, also, if you're inspired to go metal detecting out the back of this, research where you're going and also research the things you may find. And if you do not know what you're looking at when it comes to ordnance and stuff, if you could see this on the beach and not know what it was from, the options of what it could have been and how to denote whether it was or wasn't that, if you don't know that, do not touch the thing. I do find there's not a huge amount of people the same interest in this sort of stuff as I do. But if you do have an interest in this, or you at least find this video interesting, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new here. I'm on my way to 100K. I'm getting closer every day. And a massive thanks to my patrons.